So firstly, I'd like to welcome you back, Jacqueline. Uh, you were here 15 years ago. And uh, we are thrilled that you're back with us, of course, after this time. I know you went for a short run this morning. What was it like to be back in Victoria? Oh, it's beautiful. It's in that, that water and... We went around the boathouse and uh, really it was just a 20 minute but very pleasant. Victoria is uh, one of the best places in the world, I'm sure. <laughs> very nice. And the other good thing, we are going to have the pleasure of seeing Jackie in run. She's going to undertake doing the half marathon with us tomorrow. So pleased about that. But I want to ask you a few things about your early life. I know you grew up in the country. You were one of seven children. You were the middle child, I believe, of the seven. So what about your sports history as a young person going to school? Can you tell us anything about that? Um, I think uh, it was all around uh, skating on, on the river, on the ice river and uh, playing outside, tobogganing, going up and down. I did a lot of intervals doing that, going up the little hill, coming down. Um, oh yeah, it was nice. I remember sometimes we were, it was so icy, we were crossing, and uh, the, the road to the river it was all, uh, really fun. So it was all about playing outside, and some bike, and uh, going in the forest, but the sports, uh, organized sports, uh, maybe some at school a little bit, but that's about it. <laughs> so the interesting thing for me was that knowing that at 21 years of age, you took up the sport of running, and basically it was because you wanted to quit smoking. And then you went from quitting smoking to ending up be becoming named as the 20th, or the runner, the female runner of the 20th century. That's a big leap, and in fact, it was at 21 years of age, you actually started running, but your first race, I believe, was two years later. And that was a marathon. Yeah. Um... Well, first of all, I forgot that when I was young, I was also uh, working uh, on a farm. So we used to grow uh, have a, a potatoes. So all the family had to work. So I think it's a good base, you know, to learn to work for um, living means uh, you learn discipline and perseverance, and you 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 see. The steps you got to go because when you want good potatoes uh, production, you need to take care in the spring on everything. On the, you know, how do you say? Work the work the soil and wait and be patient and have rain, sun. And it's the same in running. You know, we we need a good base or a we cut corner. That's not gonna do it. So I think that's another thing growing on the farm, I think we learn to work hard for um, for the money. <laughs> so I think some and people would be interested to know that, Jackie, why was it that you chose as your very first race to go straight to the marathon yeah. distance? Yeah, I, I was running uh, just because I, I like running. After a while, you know, it was for keeping me busy, for not thinking about smoking. <laughs> then I end up uh, my first run was 20 minutes around the park and I got exhausted, so I'm uh, very exhausted. I slept all afternoon, <laughs> but I, I kept going and uh, not so long after, I was like up to one hour and uh, I felt good, you know, I felt going, I was going up a big mountain kind of in Montreal <laughs> and up there there was a cross and at the cross I always felt like Jeez, I feel good. What's happening to me? I didn't know about this endorphin case, so <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so I kept on running, not because of ra uh, I wanted to race. I didn't even know about racing. I didn't know it existed. And I was kind of naive, I guess. And then finally, I was running long runs with friends who were racing, and they look at me and say, "Why don't you try a marathon?" <laughs> okay, a marathon. <laughs> so. I found out it was 42.1, uh, and it was hot the first time, the first one I did it uh, on the beautiful island near Quebec City. Yeah, so great, Ile d'Orléans. So if you go to Quebec City, you got to go see this island. Um, maybe you should raise a statue there. <laughs> no, but it, it was great. But I did 344 because it was like 90 degrees, and the day after I felt like I had 
done almost nothing. So I was really prepared for endurance since I was doing those three hours easy. Then the second one was in Ottawa in 307, so I jumped in pretty quick. <laughs> you did, and in fact, I think you forgot to mention that here's your first marathon, as you said, 344. You were actually the second place female in that 1977. And interestingly, Boston, you just did with uh, your friend Nicole Jack, and uh, you did 344 there as well. I know it was a rough yeah. day for you, but exciting for your friend there. And yeah, I know, I did 344 in Boston. And it, it, I hope it doesn't mean it's my last one, the first one, 344. I wish I, you know, I went out faster, I had some problems, I slowed down and ended up doing 344. So I want to try again. I was supposed to be here, but some low volume stuff on my uh, young body. <laughs> so I decided to DF, and also for one good reason, I want to be there to uh, chat and then to cheer for you at the end. So. All the marathoners, especially also you know um, my good friend that I coach, and then all of you. I think it's going to be. I think there's nothing less fun than watching marathoners finish. It's it's one of the best best thing I like to do. And I'll never get tired of that. So I'll be there. <laughs> Good stuff. Like, she was certainly there in those first few marathons because in uh, Ottawa you did that 307 as you said. That was your second marathon, your third marathon. And remember she started at 344, but in your third marathon you ended up winning Il Doléon yeah. and you did a 259. So what had made that difference of 45 minutes in no time at all? I know that's the difference, I think, between knowing what you're doing and uh, I think I have this talent, I didn't know at all. Um, so it's a good switch, cigarette for endorphins and all. Uh, it's been there for me. It's been a nice, uh, nice adventure. I can keep to stop doing it, so that's why I'm careful, you know. I want to keep that knee forever. So a good balance. Um, I'm into triathlon too, so I'd like to run the Ironman someday, maybe for my 60th anniversary and maybe qualify for Hawaii. But since I want to be smart, I want to just do two. I want to qualify and this one, and then after that I'll just go in the wood and enjoy myself and take care of my body. I think it's one important thing too, is to have a good balance and uh, I enjoy being active. So I, I want to be active and uh, be healthy, that's the most important thing. So what had happened to make the big difference though in that big leap time-wise? Was it that you got a coach? Was it that you understood more about uh, getting speed work in, distance work? Yeah. Was it because in your head you realized you had this talent? Uh, in some way, I, I, um, I was training a little bit more speed, like, but uh, also I was doing a lot of endurance at the same time. I was cross-country skiing because I love the outdoors and uh, winter is great for that at home in Quebec. And um, the same day, sometimes it could be as crazy as doing 2200 with uh, someone that was kind of coaching me. Mostly taking care of me, you know, giving me advice or I uh, was going in this group to do speed, speed work. So sometimes I was maybe doing too much, but I ended up being able to do it, I think because of uh, my endurance quality. I could do it. Um, I was doing my warm down, going back home, you know, like uh, quite a long warm down. So <laughs> it was amazing, and you know, I'm amazed right now at what I did. <laughs> it's like crazy a bit. I, I did write my um, autobiography, and sometimes I got all unhappy about uh, reading what I did. So it's not all that good, but. Um, I did it. I got some injuries because of, uh, you know, sometimes doing a little bit too much. But the best things, the good things, I can advise everybody because I did some good, good things, but I also did some crazy, some, some crazy mistakes. <laughs>